We have a must watch for you today on our very first episode of Cut This, Polish That. Today we're gonna look at two different ways to process mitered kitchen. This mitered kitchen is gonna have drop down aprons, a waterfall edge, and it's gonna be vein matched as well. So for today's show, what we're hoping you learn is why the Sabrejet XP with its high production capabilities and its mitering capabilities for today's work is the best solution for your shop. We're gonna do a little speed test. So we're gonna take our Sabrejet XP with its full miter capabilities and we're gonna cut one kitchen on here using all of the capabilities of the saw to miter everything out so everything is done and I don't have to touch a piece on a different saw or a hand saw to get it cut out. The second part of this speed test is we're gonna do that same job and imitate it on the Sabrejet XP with a machine that doesn't miter like a robot or other CNC saw jets out there. Then we're gonna take that job and bring it to a dedicated miter station to finish it. And we're gonna compare the speeds on how fast and how many touch points are in that process. All right, so we're at our uh, digital photo station here. This is the Pathfinder system. First slab's loaded up, ready to go. All right, so let's say uh, we photograph this slab, get it into our digital inventory system, and you can show them how to vein match. So we're just gonna open up Slab Maker, and then we're gonna click on our photo button. That's gonna take a high quality digital image of the slab, so it's just processing this right now. Um, and then we're gonna crop it out. So now you can see we have just the slab and then we're gonna have some specific data applied to this slab, and then that will save into our digital database. So let's go back to the office and we'll do some programming. All right, so I'm at my computer ready to program. We're gonna pull open our two slabs we're gonna use, and then we're just gonna start laying stuff out on each slab. So I picked the top slab for the one that's going to the cross cut, and this bottom slab will be the one that we're gonna miter on the Sabrejet XP. So I'd mentioned the difference between the two templates where the one is gonna have the seam obviously in the countertop because we can't fit that on the crosscut XP um, and cut that inside miter. So we had to have a seam in here so we can miter all those edges. So the other difference between these two templates besides the seam is we need to add about a quarter inch of extra material to all the mitered edges because the crosscut is gonna take off a quarter inch of material. Our bottom slab we can be much closer because we're going to miter right on the saber jet. So as you can see, we can get pretty nice tight grain match um, on the slab that we're using for the saber jet XP, and we're going to miter everything on there. As you can see, I, I kind of like where that's sitting right there. Everything looks good. All right, so after I've got all the parts moved around how I like, I kind of came up with a layout that I think is satisfactory for, for each of these. Um, so now we're going to go back to Alpha Cam and then we'll start programming in Alpha Cam. I'm going to grab the one first that we're going to miter on the Sabre Jet. So once we're in Alpha Cam here, all I'm going to do is apply my undercut properties and I'm going to set this to 45.3 degrees just so we have a little bit extra to work with. So those are the undercuts. Now I'm going to go back and do our overcuts and this is going to be for that inside 90 degree miter. So once those are all done, um, back up in our Park Industries Easy buttons, I'm going to hit our Auto Toolpath button. And you can see I already got my correct tools that are selected. We're going to program at 3CM. Just going to select my parts and finish, and then Alpha Cam does all the work for me. All right, so after Auto Toolpath is done, I'm going to add a couple of water jet miter cuts that we can, so that way we can have everything come out off the saw, mitered and ready to put together. We're ready to save the job, and then we'll hit our send G-code button. Okay, so there was the quick and easy process, very streamlined. Um, so now we're ready to go back out to the saw. Let's go cut. The moment we've been waiting for. We're back at the Sabrejet XP, uh, about to load our program. Go ahead, Brian, show right. them how easy it is. Yep, I'm gonna say it's super easy. All we're gonna do is hit scan G code, grab my barcode scanner, scan twice, 
First file is loaded. There it is. All right, before Brian hits cycle start, uh, we're gonna have a side-by-side -side comparison here so we can compare the times of the two different processes. Remember, one is gonna miter, one's not, and the one that's not, we're gonna bring it to the uh, dedicated miter station. Go ahead, Brian. Ready? Okay. So as we go here, uh, on the left-hand side, we can see the Sabrejet XP, where we're gonna do the full mitering capabilities. And on the right-hand side, we got the Sabrejet XP, where we're just gonna utilize a straight cutting feature on that. Right now, we're cutting straight cuts at 160 inches a minute. All right, we're just speeding things up here a little bit. The left-hand side, as you can see, this is our first miter cut on the L-shaped kitchen. Right here, we're cutting 50 inches a minute. As you've seen in the programming, we're doing 45.3 degrees. We can go zero to 47 there. Now this is real time that we're watching here. This is 160 inches a minute that you see on the right. We also have a feature called load control that you can utilize. Uh, load control, what it does, as that blade arbor's cutting, it'll sense how many amps it's pulling. If the amps are low and it's not getting much of a load, it'll go faster to, a, to whatever set uh, speed that you you give it. You can see we're still doing miters on the, the left hand side. So why is it so important? Mitered edges are quickly becoming one of the most popular common choices for countertops. We want to show you here is what process is available for you to not turn down this work and do it efficiently in your shop. And right now on the, the right hand side, we're finishing up that island, cutting the apron pieces there. On the right hand side, we're just jetting out our sink right now. And again, we're moving 20 inches per minute there. see we're working on that seam on the the uh, the right hand side there where we're kind of forced to put a seam in there just because of the process and bring it into a different saw um, sometimes it's not a big deal sometimes you know your customer makes it a big deal to, to have an extra seam especially in a kitchen like this where uh, it's really not needed left hand side we're just doing the drop down aprons for our island our small island here Looks like we're just finishing up our last few water jets on the right-hand side. All right, we'll just wash off that table, get everything squeegeed off nice so we can mark everything up on what is our miter edge. There's just a close-up view of the Sabre jet, water jetting the sink out. Here it looks like we've got the water jet on that inside corner. So the, you'll see the, the water jet tilt to uh, 45 degrees and finish that corner out. That way we don't have any cleanup work afterwards. Um, so that miter jet has the capabilities of going anywhere from 0 to 58 degrees. So back to the non-mitering saw jet, important that you label your edges so you know what is going to be mitered when you bring it to that, uh, the miter saw itself. You don't want to miter the wrong side, especially in a grain match kitchen like this. Alright, now we're giving ourselves five minutes to move this piece, uh, these pieces to the miter station. Um, so get all the gluing tables out of the way. Now hopefully there's not another job still jammed up the uh, miter station here. Uh, we're lucky enough to have it all cleared out so we can, can finish this job up. All right, so we're at 38 minutes where we're starting this process. Let's see how long it actually takes at the miter saw. At the miter station, it's definitely more manual. You might need uh, an additional helper there for handling. Um, obviously with all the handling involved here, you gotta be careful so we don't, we don't wanna um, chip any edges here on our countertops. On the left hand side, we are completely finished with the job it looks like at 35 minutes. No additional helpers needed, maybe to unload the parts, ready to glue up and that job is complete. So doing everything on one machine really added 10 minutes to the, to the program, while on the other side we're not quite sure how long it's going to take us to, to finish everything. Every time I think I'm getting away from this job, Brian has to call me over to move another part. 
So you can see here, Brian's really hustling. Uh, he's definitely getting a sweat in. Right now he's just making sure those pieces are squared up. Oh, he's got a phone call. Boss is wondering why that job's not done, I guess. Try to utilize that table as much as we can, get as many pieces in there as we can before we run the blade for the miter. So there was little to none labor needed to uh, use a Sabrejet XP and the full capabilities there. So on the right hand side, you can definitely see that extra labor is involved. We're handling, well, that island about four times. And then the apron pieces, we're handling that three times a piece. And we're just adjusting the clamps, making sure everything's gonna clamp down where we need it. The topic on this one is speed. Both machines give you quality miter cuts here as well. Taking a closer look at robots and why they can't miter, uh, they simply cannot accommodate the hundreds of pounds of force needed for miter cutting. When it comes to accurate miters and finishing the process completely, we think the Sabrejet XP is the winner here. Blade mitering starts with machine rigidity. The Sabrejet XP's gantry style design delivers the heavy duty stiffness you need for miter accuracy. The uh, left hand side is probably glued up already and it probably finished uh, the second miter job as well. Here we're at about uh, an hour 20. Wow, so we are creeping up on an hour of additional time here. Another trend that has arrived in the industry and is probably coming to you is porcelain and decton materials. Now, obviously those are materials that are mitered and you need a machine that can miter those as well. Um, so if you want to take advantage of that niche in the market, you should consider a machine that gets processed or gets that kitchen done faster. Brian's just moving his clamps here, making sure he has those smaller pieces clamped down so they don't move while we apply our miters to them. There, we just lapped an extra hour on the right-hand side to complete this job. So not to take anything away from the crosscut. I mean, the crosscut is an exceptional machine. Gives you beautiful miters, just like the Sabrejet. Uh, what we're really looking at is the process and what's involved here. So if you're, you're researching, probably the first place to look at is a Sabrejet. But if you're adding to your capabilities um, and, and you need to give something for your robot, for example, um, the Crosscut is a great machine. Looks like we're finally starting to wrap it up here. Hour 42, and it looks like Brian is happy to be done. See the little sweat on his forehead there. Let's go take a look at those results. All right, so behind us, we have the kitchens that we programmed. Uh, you can come over here and see that they're both alike. This one over here was done just on the Sabrejet XP using its full five axis water jet capabilities uh, for miter and then the blade for miter as well. And then this kitchen over here, we use the Sabrejet XP to cut it straight and then brought it to our dedicated miter station saw. Brian, you put a lot of work into this. How'd you think today went? Honestly, it was a lot more work than I thought it would be. Besides just cutting the parts out on the uh, Saber Jet, we then had to take these parts, bring them over to our miter saw, and then run all the mitered edges on it. So it did take a lot more time. So there was a lot of handling of a lot of the pieces, which some people maybe don't think about. Um, you have to handle the piece two, three, maybe four times, as you guys saw. But I mean, we came out with very good results. And then besides the extra handlings, as you see, I may get interrupted. So I may have a phone call, or I may have to call on someone like you to come help me move some of these bigger, awkward pieces and roll them around. Yep. I expected it to be long, but not that long. The other thing I would point out too is by doing that on our miter machine, we had to add a seam into this piece where that one on the, on the Sabre Jet we saw, we could do that all in one piece. So to recap, we have one machine here, the Sabre Jet XP. Um, it's faster to process this kitchen. There's less touch points involved and there's less square footage in my shop needed. On the right hand side, looking at the robotic saw jet and a miter saw, we're adding over an hour to finish that job. We had to throw an extra seam in there just to complete it on the miter saw. Hopefully our customers don't mind. We needed extra labor, trained labor, to run that miter saw as well. Um, and then a helper there to move parts around. And then we have more total square footage with that combination as well. So if you're in the market for a new saw jet, consider the Sabre Jet XP from Park Industries. It's a high production saw jet with the mitering capabilities for any custom work that you need to do as far as miters go. 
If you'd like a live demo of the Sabrejet XP, fly to park, it's on us. We'll take care of it. We'll show you what the machine can do. So that concludes our very first episode of Cut This, Polish That. Um, we're glad you guys stay tuned with us today. If there's anything you want to see in the future, just let us know, reach out, and uh, we'd be glad to feature this on one of our episodes for you. We'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed our video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for the latest, greatest Park Industries videos. Thank you, have a great day.